slide I showed up while the music was playing uh, had this image, which is a beautiful image, it's not a painting, it's a public space telescope photograph of a distant galaxy <coughs> long, long ago and far, far away. Uh, and uh, perhaps a billion light years away almost. And you notice that there's a star here, and the star is as bright as that whole center of that galaxy. That's the center of the galaxy contains maybe 10 billion stars. Okay? And here's a star as bright as the whole center. Well, obviously, it's, the first thought is that this star is a star in our galaxy that caught away the picture. But that's not the case. This is a star at the edge of this galaxy. It's a star that's just exploded. It's a supernova. And exploding stars are the brightest fireworks of the universe. And they shine briefly, and by briefly I mean a period of maybe a month, with the brightness of 10 billion stars. And uh, it turns out these supernovae, which could be seen across the universe, are great standard candles. I'll show you in a second. But the problem is that supernovae don't occur while well, it's actually fortunate for us that stars don't explode too often. But it's also fortunate for us that they explode because every atom in your body came from one that exploded. That's subject of another lecture. But stars explode about once per 100 years per galaxy. So that's the rate at which they explode. Now that's the problem if you want to study these things, right? I mean, so you might think, okay, we can assign a graduate student to each galaxy. 100 years about the right time for PhD. Graduate students are dying about so there you go. Um, but you don't have to do that because the universe is big and old. And rare things happen all the time. And so if you actually hold your hand out and look at the night sky one night, look at a spot between the stars, hold it up and hold a little, make a little hole about the size of one of your $2 coin, and pick a spot in the sky where there are no stars. It's completely dark. Well, if you pointed at one of the world's largest telescopes at that spot in the sky, you'd be able to see about 100,000 galaxies in that region. And once per 100 years per galaxy means if you look at that, you'd expect to see 10 stars explode on a given night. That's really kind of amazing. That's what astronomers do. They apply for telescope time and say, tonight we're going to see 10 stars explode. And, you know, they might be 9, they might be 11, they might be cloudy, but not see any. Um, <laughs> But, and so we can, actually, we can actually study these exploding stars and watch them from the time they explode and, and until they go off. And here's a little movie that plays over and over again of, a, of an exploding star. Here in the galaxy, they're the brightest. We can measure its colors and determine what kind of exploding star it is. There's a certain kind of exploding star called the Type 1a supernova. There's a really good standard candle. So now we can measure the expansion of the universe much better than Hubble could. Here's a new Hubble plot. This was made after the important discovery that on a log log plot everything is a straight line.